welcome back and today I'm flying about in my GN bazooka as you can see this one is uh, good for bashing asteroids with its immense barrel but yeah uh, today I thought I'd just show you a couple of my uh, latest models which I've converted over Christmas it's been pretty quiet with all the holidays but uh, I hope you've all had a good time and it's nearly New Year, so Happy New Year for anybody that is experiencing that at this time of year or already has, because you could be watching this tomorrow, I guess. But here we go. We've got the GN Bazooka in the back and the latest addition, the Rick Dom. Took the model and pointed it forwards. We've got a bit of a scale issue though, as you can see. <laughs> Uh, because the barrel was so long, it's actually taken it as from the barrel length rather than the height of the mech, which means 160, 160, it didn't get, it's not the same height. These are the problems you have with Smedit, you know, but it's, that's just, a, it's not a problem, it's uh, just part of the process. You've got to get your uh, dimensions and scaling right, <laughs> which goes to show why the, the one with the head and the arm detaching was, you know, it was a bit tricky. But anyway, this is the Rick Dom. He's going to be slightly bigger next time you see him. <laughs> so he should be the same height as Gundam. Or we'll look it up and make sure it's sort of roughly accurate to whatever the height of this thing should be. So if this thing was bigger than Gundam, then it'll be bigger. But at the moment, it's a bit too short. But still, as you can see, I've straightened it up, lined it uh, in the axis that counts, so we got it going straight. We've got the whole gun. I think it came out okay, to be honest. And I painted all that in Smedit too, which is always tricky. So, like I say, I haven't done any detailing other than Smedit. Here's another random one. I found a model for this D Deridex. So when I looked up the height, the, the, the size of this thing, it said 1,024 meters. I was like, damn. Because, yeah, that's massive. Like, this is, you're going to see some. Uh, you know Starfleet ships later um, in the video and this is not to scale this is like I think it's about 300 long maybe it's or maybe 400 at best it's it's not it's not a small ship but this is less than half the size probably less than a third size guys so you know this is another thing you know I think sometimes it's best to work with a scaled down ship just for the sake of you know the game because <laughs> sometimes you don't want like sector sized ships flying around everywhere i wouldn't mind seeing one and parking on one but this is metal gear rex if you've uh, played metal gear metal gear so here we have rex say hi just uh took the mech design for inspiration it's an interesting design he's got three turrets he's got like a turret between his legs no jokes so anyway uh, someone made an ISS once, so I went to find a model and just uh, painted in smed it, like I say. Tried to make it so that you could get inside, but I think my scale was slightly off. I've uh, been playing a bit of War Thunder. I think planes go to your brains. So, gloss the meteor, people. Uh, everything here is done in smed it. I'm going to be doing a sort of masterclass style tutorial soon, which will cover everything that I've learned in the last few months with smed it. Um, this is going to be some interesting stuff in there, stuff I haven't covered in previous tutorials. That was a Saiyan pod from Dragon Ball Z. Um, it's <laughs> at the moment, you, it's a sphere, but no, <laughs> anyway, it's just not coloured or anything. So here we are with my latest Moon Rover. I've got Plex door wheels and a uh, flat pad for building on. It was actually based on a, a little, moon, little Moon Rover. This is asteroid number one. Asteroid number one is very long. And it's fully comprised of exploding blocks. Obviously to be speared at someone or a planet or something. I don't know, we'll see. We've all seen Big Zam. All right, this, oh, the big red thing was Zambot 3. It's not colored, but it was mostly red. It needs all the blue and the white and the yellow. So it, it, there were, most of it was red, so I just thought, ah, I'll make it red. But that's another anime show. It had some cool details on the hull, though, so I wanted to sort of, like, check out how that had converted. Because there's another thing about Smedit. You can sometimes see some detailing and go, ooh, and then you can steal that little bit and just build it by hand. So, anyway, onwards. So we have another mecha. This one is also going to get repositioned. 
We're going to change him so his head and arms are firing forward. Maybe reposition the wings a little bit. If I'm clever, I might even reposition the legs. But basically, that one is wing zero. Um, it's not the... Well, it's a good model. I can't fault him. It's got, the, it's got the detail in the right place. I think the wings could be a little bit tougher. Um, you know, they're not quite what I remember. But anyway, it's a cool model. And it looks sweet. And there'll be a link in the description. Here is the Zaku, one of my favorite designs ever. Um, and basically the Zaku, oh, you can see my my, my, uh, her, my uh, gladiator down there. So yeah, the Zaku doesn't have a weapon yet, so I probably won't use that model, but I will be, because uh, it's so tempting to just position the arms and just stick a gun in it, because I could make, well, I could get another gun, scale it down. It's very simple to do. To be honest, I've just been using SketchUp. You could use it 3D object manipulation tools. You could get all that. You could do that. I mean, if you've got that, great, do it. But most people don't have it. So what I've been doing is working exclusively in SketchUp because it's free. And that's what's associated with, you know, I use that to export to OBJ anyway. So it's like, well, it's part of my process. So I may as well just use it a bit more. So yeah, this meteor should be fun. I can't wait to fly this thing into a planet. Just gotta get, just gotta watch out. Don't hit it. Don't hit it. <laughs> the satellite. I can't remember what the name of it was. It's got a name, but it's loads of numbers and letters. So, but uh, I used a bit of Omba underneath there. You can't really see it from here, but I've done a bit of trick, bit of you know, bit of trickery with my uh, selection and uh, things like that, just to spice it up. I mean, this one was done with stripes. The white under there was done with stripes, so it could be finished off. Uh, and obviously, plex door landing gear for the win. Um, the ISS needs a space shuttle. Um, Rex needs solid snake. Um, or is it liquid? And yeah, uh, D Deridax. Well, it's not really, is it? It's just a Romulan warbird because it's like. That's the only thing, when you look at things and you go, ah, it's not, well, it is, it looks like it, but it's like, it's not even half the size of what it should be. And it kind of makes you go, you know, because you can make other things to scale. Like, anyway. Back to another Xeon mobile armor. I like my Xeon mobile armors. Um, pretty simple. Uh, I don't know if you've, I think it was called the Zamouth, but um, you'll have to, correct me because there were so many of them I sometimes get them confused <laughs> Principality of Xeon made lots of mobile armors in the uh, Gundam series which is cool you should check that out um, and if you're not serious about it there is a currently a series right at the moment called Gundam Build Fighters oh yeah that was right um, after seeing some starships recently, it sort of inspired me to go and find some Star Trek models because there's going to be loads of them. Checking out my mech bros, those two are going to be fun to play with in a co-op slash multiplayer environments. I uh, didn't do any colouring on this because it was so massive, even my computer didn't like it. Um, you get to a point where you just can't really do uh, painting or selection because it's just too massive. And it's your own fault for converting something so huge. Um, but they do look great. I mean, it's cool because star sh like these things, you just paint them all white and the lighting does the rest. Um, there's a few rough edges on it, but you know, it's a conversion. What are you gonna do? So here's the next project after I had fun with my Galaxy class found a galaxy saucer well in fact it wasn't a galaxy it was a different class but it did the same thing so you know got the engineering section and the saucer section guess what i'm going to do with the docking guys i'm going to make sure that saucer's that saucer's small see i've got a couple of them there because i was messing about with a uh, scale trying to figure out how big the saucer needs to be and at the moment the saucer is 80 percent the site 80 percent wide as the sh engineering is long so I was like <laughs> I thought I'd estimate and it's not right the saucer needs to be like way huge so anyway I'm gonna get back to that and after I had lots of fun with my comet I thought well do you know what that comet just wasn't enough and then I made this 
And this is an absolute beauty. Um, it's geodesic on the front, which is what really caught my eye because I thought, yeah, that looks great. Look at that. It's like a sort of honeycomb. But it's not. It's all off. But it looks fine. Explosives at the front in total. And what I did was I used an ombre of two colors. And then I changed one of them to crystal and the other to explosives. So the tail is even made of explosives, but it is quite a lot of crystal in it. So it got a nice glow like that. I decided to make the front sort of like with, you know, like a half a beach ball. So I figure it's going to get exploded the minute it touches anything. So, so um, yeah, I mean, just sort of caught a bit of a modeling bug. Had an idea to make this Gundam mini game because this would actually work. You just get fleets of people in whatever, you know, choose your fight, choose your mech. And then we go and take on Big Zam. And Big Zam will have a giant gun. And lots of turrets all the way around him. And so that's basically that, really. Here we are, you NX-02, this model. Um, that was the name of the model on SketchUp. I believe it's from the Enterprise series. As you can see, I used the selection box to change the nacelles into ice crystal. And then I just simply moved it over to the other side and did the same operation. Uh, with the uh, nacelles are uh, at the sort of what are they called bussard collectors I think they're called I used a red and white ombre on both and then changed the white to lava gives you a nice little effect there and it took two seconds just literally put the box exactly around the collector and then did the did the did the ombre and chucked it over the other side I could have spent so much more time on doing little bits and pieces but I had a buzz and I had lots more models to get through. So this is all I did to it, you know. Um, I love that comet. I love how, the, see these, the bigger the model, the more it sort of lends to itself for sometimes. Like you get a sort of weird, see the, see the planet there? It's got a weird sort of uh, parallax. I don't know. It's an optical illusion of some, some sort. This one ended up looking a lot more holy than I wanted it to be. Um, it's probably because of the automatic smoothing could be refined. But this is apparently an Avenger class. I mean, when I showed it to somebody, they said that they thought it wasn't. So maybe it's not. But anyway, the Easter egg for everybody who's been watching for this whole video. You get a sneak peek at the Sazabi. And this one is one of the best conversions to date. This thing's going to get positioned in many different poses and hopefully you're going to get to see him more as uh, we do a special Gundam Team collaboration on this build. That there is Full Frontals mech from Gundam Unicorn. So hey, check it out. Just type in Sinanju and uh, you'll be impressed. I'd say thanks for watching at this point and a Happy New Year to all. We'll see you in January. We've got so much more coming. And uh, look at this, this is just me. One, one uh, what, I think about two hours, I sat there, I'd eaten all my Christmas dinner, and I was thinking, do you know what? I'm gonna go make some ships. And this is what we got. But there you go, guys. Thanks to everyone who's watching and subscribing. And uh, like if you want more. Comment, please. I love comments. I might do a comment special. We'll start doing stuff like that. First thing I tried to build was my surfboard, <laughs> and obviously that doesn't really work. You have to get in the cockpit. And release the docking cannon. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, the MP. T3, 12 o'clock. Three look, a zoom, and the character will sort of pin. So as you can see, I'm rotating like that. Uh, normal movement controls, same as if you're running about. So uh, guns don't actually fire yet. So and also large ships can only have the um, 
Oh no! Right, press X to zoom. Right, and it's going a little bit longer towards the blue thing. 2019, 1650. Oh, what's the that kills everyone? Blue. Blue. <laughs> Other than that, I'm at a bit of a loss. But anyway, I'm. Fox survival.